Uh, number four. Anything you want to add or no? No, no. Cool. Okay, guys, so number four. Abusing the power of credit credit cards and using using it for bad debt. Mm. So this one's big because I'm not sure a lot of kids nowadays they are growing up to see people uh, splurging money, uh, cars, lifestyle, um, iPads, iPhones, all this stuff. And usually at that age you don't have money, so you may <coughs> be lucky to get a credit card or, for example, have your mom or dad get you one. Now, as a kid though, let's be real here. All of us can say young, when we were younger, we waste a lot of money. I know I did for sure. I'm sure everyone in here with some money as well. And you learn from experience and from mistakes you make in real time, for the most part. However, in school, in college, with a credit card, you can go crazy. You could buy food. You could maybe buy a bottle at a club. You could even do, I don't know, do a whole full Amazon order for months on your credit card. Nonetheless, though, using the card incorrectly causes that to happen. And like anyone can tell you, Credit card debt is one of the highest uh, APR interest rates you, you can have because that's like twenty seven like percent now or so twenty six percent. Yeah, it fluctuates it's really high. greatly. So imagine you're not paying that back before the end of the month. That's going to add up very quickly, and before you know it, it may even become a part of your current income always because that amount of money, guys, if it adds up correctly, and if it is going to be done from a credit card, can be massive amounts of money at a time if you're not if you don't pay it back. So I said I'll, I'll have to say that like. At the very beginning, especially with credit cards, you need to understand the game, how it works, and not be messed up. Because in the game of credit, if you use it incorrectly, it'll fuck you up. I'll give you an example. So, two guys are in the same um, job, same level of life, same household, same rent, same everything, right? Same income, same expenses. One guy has a credit card, let's call him guy A, and he does shopping at the mall, travel, vacation on a credit card. But, he doesn't pay it off every month. Second guy, guy B, has a credit card, but only pays for gas, business expenses, maybe maybe a couple uh, nights out that are going to be more like lower costs, and he pays off the bill every single month. Obviously, from this example, you can see who's a better user, user of the credit card, but eventually, guy A is going to have debt he can't pay off, or debt has so much money that anything that comes up with opportunity, like I mentioned before, he can't afford to do it because he's stuck on credit card debt. So eventually, over a period of time, Guy B is going to be, uh, be be more able to, I guess, take advantage of it because he's going to have money in reserves and a full credit card he can use at all times versus Guy A will only have maybe his reserve income and be lucky if he has money from his credit card to use at all. In short, guys, credit itself can help you get uh, a job, help you get, for example, a car, a house, even possible business ventures that we don't know of right now. And it's because people see credit as a way to see, okay, is, this, is he actually smart with his money? Is he able to pay back on time? If they can see that, then you get a lot done in life. And as well, if you want to get a property, you need credit. So it works out better for you anyway. Um, this is probably one of the worst um, things that most Americans mess up is um, their credit. And most Americans, right, have consumer debt which nine out of ten times comes from credit cards because they're using money they don't have right to purchase things they don't need with credit cards that will sink them deeper into debt and decrease their credit score at the same time so you're failing on multiple angles because you're literally putting yourself in debt and not only putting yourself in debt to pay back said debt you're paying it at an incredibly high interest rate these credit card companies guys don't make money when you use the credit card and pay it back in full that's what they don't want you to do they want you to make the minimum payment so they can continue to uh, um, uh, make money on you on interest rates and interest rates are extremely high they can fluctuate anywhere from 15 all the way up to 30 percent on some of these credit cards depending on what time of the year it is etc and, it, and it, it's always could fluctuate so using credit cards guys to purchase things that are you know you don't need like not for a business is a l most of the time now if you're using the credit card to purchase something that can help you make money that's one thing but most people let's be honest most americans use credit cards to buy stupid shit that isn't necessarily going to benefit them vacations clothes um fucking um luxury items luxury experiences like the, the uh, l let me tell you that guys this man this whole concept of luxury, nine out of ten times, it's a fucking scam. All right, it is fine dining, lu uh, luxury ho uh, travel, all this other. It's it's all a fucking scam, especially fine dining. It's a fucking scam, bro. I'm telling you guys, it's all a fucking scam because the reality is they're buying chicken from the same niggas that buy the chicken from Chipotle. Same shit, 
Okay, they're just telling you that it's oh yeah, it's imported chicken from Italy. No, they're buying the same fucking chicken from the same distributor that Chipotle buys their fucking chicken. And all these other restaurants. It's just that they go ahead, put some stupid ass sauce on it, put some other flavoring on it. You got you know, got some guy with a fucking weird mustache that p- comes out this way that says he's a fucking Picasso chef. Then he sprinkles some shit on it, and then they're charging you ten x the fucking price. That's what's really going down here. Sprinkle, sprinkle. You know, so like. You really want to stay away from like these luxury items and luxury experiences, especially in the beginning when you don't have money like that, right? Like me, guys, I'm just starting maybe every now and then using, uh, you know, using luxury services. But I still don't, th- I still don't go eat at fancy ass restaurants like that. I still don't do, uh, d- don't spend money on fucking luxury cars and any of this other shit. It's all a fucking scam. And credit cards allow you to partake in these scams at a higher level and then drag yourself into debt with high interest rates and then you end up in a, under a fucking hole that you can't fucking manage and the worst is sip your tea i gotta drink my coffee before i say this one the worst is you guys that make 80 to three three hundred thousand dollars per year why because you guys are at a point where you guys are just starting to make money you're doing pretty well you can afford better things, right? But you don't make enough where you can get the top tier shit, right? So you can go ahead and get yourself a first class flight or business or whatever it may be, right? Every now and then, no problem. You could go ahead and eat at a fancy restaurant. You could go ahead and get yourself that a nice car, uh, a Mercedes a C C class or E class, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe not the S, you ain't there yet, but you can go ahead and get yourself the C or the E class. You can get yourself a BMW 3 Series or 5 Series, right? And lease it and pay your three five hundred dollars a month. And that is where it's the most dangerous because once you start getting money, right? You can start affording things. A lot of the times, what you'll do is. You, you rise up, rise up, rise up. Oh, I can start affording things. And you stop. Because now, you're getting these items. You're buying these items. You're procuring these items. And then they typically come with debt. Now you're stuck there paying off this fucking luxury item because you can afford it. Yeah. That's where a lot of people end up in the fucking middle class. Something like 70, 80% of people that make 100K or plus more per year still live paycheck to paycheck. And they tell you 0% down. The car can be yours today. You can walk off the lot with this car right now. 0% down. Are you going to say no? But no, you're going to say like, 0% now? Let's go. To all my higher earners, right? Young professionals, you guys that are entry level or, you know, maybe even executive level, you're making, you know, 80 to three, four hundred thousand dollars a year. You guys, a lot of you guys fall in this category where you make good money and you can do certain things, but you still, right? Purchase these luxury items and then you become a slave to these fucking luxury items and drag yourself in debt when you didn't need to. Guys. Fucking multimillionaire, I still drive my 2002 fucking Honda. And guess what? I'm going to continue to drive that fucking 2002 Honda because I understand that cars and paying a fucking monthly bill nine out of ten times is a fucking scam. Fresh will tell you. No, no, 100%. He hey, learned the hard way. He could tell you guys. Hey, listen, guys. Mine is 100% right. I have my phone cars, but I'll tell you this, man. That shit is expensive for no reason. And they... Hold on. The house always wins. Understand that. Good point. The house... And in this case, it's dealership. Always wins. Even if he's your friend, you guys are cool, brother. They're there to make money. So at the end of the day, guys, having a car is a liability. And if you're just starting out, it will just, you know what it'll do? The money you would have spent on yourself, either to procure a skill, it was going to go towards your car payment and your insurance. And God forbid something goes wrong with the car, cooked. Yeah, bro. So look, I I mean, obviously I'm a bit extreme here with this 2002 Honda, but uh, you know, I, I say it to, to let you guys know that having super nice things isn't necessary all the time. And a lot of the time, it's bullshit. You can get by on way less. Way, way less. Right? I'll be honest with y'all. If we didn't have this podcast, I'd be living in a fucking one-bedroom apartment, super fucking cheap, chill, with that comes furnished. Right? Learn to be happy with less, guys. Learn to be happy with being a minimalist. Learn to be happy with just having less things. It'll make you feel better. You won't have as much debt. You won't have to worry about shit because once you're attached to things, right? Because once you procure something on credit, now that thing owns you. You don't own it. It owns you because you have to pay for it every single month to maintain it. And a lot of times, it's not worth it. So who owns what? And If you don't pay, it's gone. So all the money you spent is gone for nothing. So guys... Don't be a debt. Uh, sorry, don't be a slave to debt, man. Don't be a slave to items. Don't be a slave to a certain lifestyle. Like, 
buy what you could afford, and then go below that. It really isn't necessary. And this is coming from guys that, that got some money, and we're telling you. Fresh is experienced. He's telling y'all, don't fucking do it. Learn from his mistake. Bro, I've had all the cars you could think of. I'll say this, man. Was it worth it? Maybe a little bit, but not totally. The experience was nice, but the money wasn't nice. <laughs> yeah, man. God damn, nigga. It was expensive. It's not worth it, guys. It's not, yeah. It's not worth it, bro. So, guys, just live way below your means. Try not to drag yourself in credit card debt because that credit card debt, those things that you buy that you think you own, they actually own you because now you have to fund maintaining it and keeping it. I'll tell you what. The best thing you can do is when you get to that level of success, you spend the money on experiences people that you care about. That's a reward in itself because, for example, you and Angie, you want to go eat, you want to go travel, see your, your family. You can do that with no sleep because you can afford it after the fact and you did it where it doesn't bother you at all. Versus you do it at the very beginning, shit, I got to pay my rent. I got to pay my car, credit card. Shit, I just spent like 1200 bucks on traveling. So having experience with people you care about after the fact is way more impressive and as well, way more rewarding because now it's on your, your, your time, your dime without an issue at all. So. Yeah. I mean, but refrain from traveling in the beginning, guys. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that will kill your money, too. Like, uh, what Fresh is saying is, like, you've made a bunch of money and you don't spend. You're very frugal. Like, if you want to go ahead and have a, you know, a steak a, 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 a somewhere, it won't matter because you, you, you your costs of living are so goddamn low yeah. compared to what you make where you don't even think twice. And that's where I want you guys to be. That's the point where I'm at because, like, I wear the same clothes every day. I don't buy nothing really like that outside of, like, business expenses where, you know, I eat Chipotle every day. So if I decide one day... Uh, not that I would, but I'm like, I'm going to go eat a Komodo <laughs> one day, right? I'm going to go get a fucking skirt steak because I do like that. I think their, their skirt steak is good. That's the only reason I even fuck go to that place, even though they're scammers. Well, we know who owns it. Anyway, Wait a minute. Wait uh, a minute. They're not scammers. They make good money. <sighs> and the guy, the owner's a great guy. Anyway, good, right? Good friend of mine. Yeah, well, first I was going to say that. Nah, I don't give a shit. So, the, for, uh, yeah. I but, care. But to me, yeah, I, I get it. Uh, but to me, I look at this, all, it's all, all fine dining is a fucking scam, right? So, if I go there and I want to go ahead and get some food there, I don't got to think twice because my cost of living is so fucking low where if I go to the, a place like this and eat once, it's not going to matter. 